Раз, раз. Раз, раз, раз. О, отлично. Всем привет. Я думаю, что можно уже начинать. Нормально меня слышно, да? Так, ну, в общем, тема, тема моего доклада – это э, такие противные штуки, как э, бюджет и как э, вещи, ну, вещи, которыми вы не хотите вообще никогда заниматься. Э, но основная тема – это agile с фиксированным бюджетом. В общем, это, скажем так, эм, это вещь, которая, скорее всего, не должна существовать вообще. То есть это, ее, нам приходится этим заниматься, но этой вещи, по идее, не должно быть. У меня еще вопрос. Если вообще я должен был на английском эту презентацию, если, если вы хотите, чтобы я перешел на английский, для меня это без проблем. То есть здесь, мне все равно на русском, на английском. Как, как вам удобнее? Есть кто-нибудь, кто... Is there anyone who wants to, me to speak English? Okay. Okay, so several people want me to speak English. Okay. Sorry guys, then it will be in English. So, uh, let me introduce myself. Um, I'm working in Smile um, since, I will say, six months now, uh, because I actually am from Ajax, and uh, as, as you maybe already know, um, Smile uh, bought Ajax, so now we are all the French guys from the uh, are working in Smile, which changes stuff uh, for us. Uh, it's not really changing in Ukraine, but it's changed for us in France. Um, I'm managing projects uh, since 2012, I think. Um, my background is mostly technical. I'm a technical guy. Uh, I've been Drupal developer a long time ago. Uh, so whenever I speak about Drupal, I mostly know about what I'm saying, mostly. I actually wanted to stop the presentation with that because if you can not do that, just don't do it. I mean, agile on a fixed budget, it's a very, very bad practice. No, it's like, if you just, just, just don't do it if you can. 
because you will fail most of the time. This is the, the problem is that you will, I will probably say you will fail nine of 10 times because uh, uh, when I say fail, I say in the terms of the budget because this is your problem. Your problem will be a budget, okay? So just don't do it if you cannot. But when, when we say fixed budget, we cannot say agile. It's not agile anymore, right? When, it's, uh, when you speak up with someone and they say, I have, I don't know, 5,000 euros and I, you have to deliver me a project, there is no more agile in that. Because agile is about changing the scope. Agile is about uh, organizing your development to deliver some value. And it's not about the budget. Um, so yeah, as I say, I wanted to stop the presentation, but I still need some motivation slide because you, you know, you will get this kind of project. How many project managers are he, we have here in the room? Okay, okay, yeah. fair enough. Um, and the salespeople? Anyone who is selling projects? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know. Yeah, you are doing everything. <laughs> um, okay, so let's start with sales. Because this is this is where you where you get fucked usually when you're a project manager and you need to manage uh, agile project. Um, at some point, uh, you have to really understand what what is selling the what is the selling the project. Like, what's the fixed what what's like what's the fixed price contract? So well, if you get back to basics, um, just check the PM PM book and they say that this is something that. Uh, a type of fixed price contract where the buyer pays the seller a fixed amount of money. So basically you sign to deliver something for some fixed amount of money. And uh, here is the problem that it's very, very, very complicated to actually uh, fix and estimate everything in the, in the project because project takes time and uh, Eventually, you will always have changes. Like, it's inevitable. Um, and yeah, the scope. So when, if you are a sales guy and someone is asking you, can you please fix me the budget for my project? Most of the time, there is some kind of uh, specification, which is, it can be in the form of the backlog, it can be in the form of a document, anything. So, and this is where you basically start. So you start with the, the specifications. And um, the problem is that, again, this is not agile. In agile, most of the time, you don't know this, the whole scope. It's, uh, it's something that is going through time. So it, in, term, in terms of, uh, you're speaking about sprints, about delivering business value, about, you're not speaking about the scope. Um, so, as, is, as they say in Agile Manifesto, basically you have to respond uh, to change. Uh, there is no plan. The plan is very short term. So basically there is, you have to respond to change and you have to uh, welcome the changing requirements. So you have to, you have to accept changing, which is, which is okay, you know, it's, uh, that's a project. In six months, it's not the same. Uh, and in fixed price, they basically ask you, deliver me this, for this amount of money and this planning. Uh, and then, as they say, agile, you know, people, this is like a magical word. People say, okay, we do agile, but no one actually knows what's that. No one is doing pure agile. It's always, uh, it's always um, an adapt, you have some adaptations of agile. Uh, it's, when you speak about even story points, it's not in agile manifesto, right? Uh, story points is something which is invented to track how you perform in Agile. Uh, and uh, this, this one is uh, basically, tr I'm trying to show you what's the difference between the fixed price waterfall project and Agile. So uh, it's always the question about the resources, time, features, value, and uh, uh, Agile projects are mostly value driven. It's basically, you know that you are working closely with business, you are trying to deliver some value, which is important for the business. Uh, and the uh, waterfall project is about the plan. So you just plan, you say, I have 30 days in front of me and I just 
execute everything that I need to do uh, in the uh, for this project. And uh, sometimes it's actually a good thing. So when you sell agile, you have to you sell the value. Uh, when you say fixed price fixed price projects, uh, this is a good way for you to actually earn money. It's I will not say that it's the best way, but if you know how to do it properly, fixed price projects are very good because at some point you know you're repeating yourself all the time. So you, all the projects are kind of the same. You start them, you, you do some development, you deploy. It's pretty much the same, right? In terms of the steps. So when you at some point you're becoming good at it, uh, and uh, even the waterfall will work for you. Uh, and uh, I wanted just to show you an example about the like agile team, how we do it in Smile. Um, this is a very typical one. Uh, you have the Scrum Master, Product Owner, Development Team. Um, you have some people who is who are around uh, this team, helping them, uh, etc., following the budgets. Um, okay, so if you are a sales guy, and if you want to really um, properly sell this agile, I mean, I already say if you if you can if you can not selling agile on fixed budget then please don't do it. But if you have to, you, just, you always need to think about all these elements uh, because m most of the people always forget about like half of the things. So you take, for example, Sprint Zero. We call it Sprint Zero. It's initiation sprint. So you have to start the project. You have to, there is some time spent. So this, this time must be financed somehow. So if you are not selling that, you are doing it for free for your client. Same stabilization sprints. We call it. You can call it whatever you want. It can be bug fixing sprint. Anything. So this time must be also sold. You should. You should not forget about selling that. You have some time for the deployment, and uh, it depends on your project. But some, if you are using some, let's if you speak Drupal. Uh, so if you are using some Drupal cloud architectures, like you're using Acquia or Platform.sh or uh, MAZ, so. Basically, it's easier for you to deploy. But if you are on some old school servers, clusters, you have to sell the deployment time. If you don't sell it, it will not work. You will do it for free again. Performance. Performance, everyone always forget about that. Uh, people, when the sales guy sells Agile project, he's just you know selling sprints. He say, OK, uh, let's do five sprints, and we will finish the project. And this is the biggest mistake you can ever do, uh, because you, ha you have to really think about what you what's included in that, uh, because you are still speaking about the fixed price project. Again, all of this kind, all all this kind of stuff, documentation, SEO, availability of the uh, of your servers, compatibility with browsers. People always forget about that. Um, and uh, what's important that when you are a sales guy, I don't know how it works for you guys who who is doing sales, but um, those guys, sales guys, are most of the time motivated by um, the signed contract. So it's not about uh, the margin of the project. It's not about uh, productivity of the people. It's just you know I signed the contract, um, and that's why they, they try they, they try to sell it. They they sign this agile stuff on the fixed price. They say I will we will deliver you your project in five sprints. With this amount of money, and uh, they always forget about all this, all this stuff. Um, okay, um, we delivered like lots of um, fixed price project in Ajax. I think 90% uh, of our projects was fixed price. Uh, so now, so we know, and uh, our delivery model is based on agile. So we are taking the agile. Elements we are delivering in sprints. We try to um, organize ourselves to respond to changes. We try to uh, organize ourselves properly in all the in all, all the stuff. But uh, you have to really respect, uh, and uh, you you should have all these processes in place before you act, before you even try to start responding to the bits of agile projects uh, on fixed price. Before you start to do that, you must be, make sure that your company have the processes to do that. Because uh, you will only be able to 
get some money out of it if your company is working properly. So it, you, sh you should have the processes. Uh, because I don't know what you think about that. Any, uh, any, any company exists to get to, 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 some, to earn money, right? Uh, it's, uh, it's inevitable. They can say we are cool, we are nice, come work with us, but actual thing is they all want to get money. Uh, and uh, you can get more money if, you're, if you spend less time uh, on some stuff that should be automated. So when, when your company do not have communication tools, you cannot deliver. That's, 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 that's something which is not right. Um, you must have this kind of a process, uh, which, which we call pre-sales validation. Basically, it's when um, a sales guy is starting to sell the project. Um, he tries to estimate it. And uh, if he's doing it by himself, he's wrong because he must consult with some people who already, who already delivered some projects. He must consult with production team. The production team must always validate what the sell, sell, sales guy is trying to sell. I know it's probably easy for you to understand, but development environments, you, you must be able to create them quickly. This is where you win time. This is where you actually get some value uh, from the project because if you are selling fixed price project, your only goal is to minimize the amount of work on this project. You must deliver it with the minimum amount of time because if you, if you start to spend a lot of time on the project, you will eventually uh, lose your budget and uh, there is no interest in that. Uh, you must have continuous delivery. This is very important because if you're doing agile, you must deliver like every sprint, you know? Uh, and uh, during the sprint, you, you have to push the code. You have to test quickly and without continuous delivery, you cannot do that. So this is be before you even start, you have to, to really think about that. You have, you have to have all of this uh, in a company. You have to understand how the people allocation works because when the project is started, for the agile projects, basically you must have a team and uh, you must be able to quickly construct a team. If you don't do that, again, you will lose time and you will lose money eventually. Um, K KPIs, you know, people hate KPIs most of the time uh, because this is something that is used to track your salaries, to say that you're performant, you're not performant, but on fixed price projects, you have to have KPIs. Uh, you have to do burn down chart at minimum because uh, this is how you will be able after to uh, say to the client that I need more time and uh, you will be able to show them that uh, imagine that I have a project with 100 story points and I'm doing uh, as 20 story points per, per sprint. When you will arrive in the end of the project and you see that it's not yet finished, but you're, you're, you're like starting to lose money. Your burn down chart and your, your story points will be an argument to speak with the client. You will say, I need another sprint and it costs 20, and the sprint is 20 story points. And you know that 20 story points, you do it in one week. And which it means that you can sell another week of development time. So if you don't track in, if you're not tracking that, you don't know how you perform it. Uh, because actually, the, um, all the story points stuff, this is not an, this is not an agile. This is uh, just a, this is just an adaptation because people start to think that uh, let's just deliver the project, like just deliver. Let's not estimate anything. And nobody actually knows if you are good or not. If are you performing or not? So basically, they started to invent that. And now I'm pretty sure that if you are doing an agile project, you have this, this you have story points. You can call it whatever you want, but. Now you have it everywhere, but it's not actually in the Agile manifesto. This is something that, that's adapted. Um, so when you are doing Agile project, uh, you know on the fixed price, on the fixed budget. So basically you have a fixed, fixed budget, you have fixed planning most of the time, and the only thing which can be variable is the scope. So you must, from the first day of this kind of project, you must explain to the client that you will probably have to skip some stuff. You must prioritize properly. So you have to really define this kind of matrix. We call it flexibility matrix. And we have one internal, which we use to um, assess the project and how we are going to deliver internally. And ideally, you have to have this 
matrix also with the client. So you have to explain them that basically you have a you have a scope. How flexible is that? Can we remove something? Can we add something? Uh, can we change the planning? Because when you are on the fixed budget, basically you just deliver. You can deliver later if you want. Uh, if you can, if you agree with the client, but just the more you wait, the more money you lose. So you, this is kind of a stuff you need to think. The cost, I mean, the cost is most of the time fixed. Okay, so this is this is this is a, this is my presentation about fixed cost. So we don't speak about that here. I will come to that in the next slide. I done the quality. You can see that I put it on the flexible point, and this is where you can. This is which actually where you can really um, help yourself and say that I will do less quality. This is a bad thing, you know. I mean, everyone, everyone is agree, agree with that, but your um, your goal as a project for as for a project manager is to finish the project and be profitable. So sometimes quality can be more can be flexible. You check you check less stuff. Uh, compliance compliance is something that is that exists mostly in the big accounts, like big groups. Uh, they have uh, lots of internal internal stuff, and if you don't estimate that in your project, you will get you will get problems. Security again. So uh, when you are deliver a project on the fixed price, you should always you should think about how you are going to run the project. And uh, if you out of your budget on the deployment day, who who will finance everything else? Because there there is there is a lot of stuff. If there is an issue on the, during the deployment. If in one week after deployment you have troubles with security, someone must fix that, right? And it must be sought. Uh, one important stuff here is that um, the MVP. Most of the time, if the client asks you about agile delivery, you are speaking about MVP because they have fixed budget, so they have some something in their head, um, and uh, they won't really. For you to deliver um, MVP, and this is the, the wrong way for MVP is to deliver just a part of, of functionality. This is this is the wrong way, and the right way is try to, you know, start with the basic functionality. Make sure that what you do is reliable. Make sure it's usable, and you have it's beautifully designed. But this is optional. It depends on what you're doing. Um, yeah, this one is this is one this one is quite important. This is actually my day-to-day -day life, although almost all the time. Um, uh, when you deliver a fixed price budget, you probably have some kind of a backlog, uh, and uh, you have this you have the scope, and uh, you have to deliver it. Uh, but it's, in six months, client will arrive and say, "I need to change that," but you already signed for the for the scope. So you must have a way to respond to changes, and this is like a agile part in this uh, fixed price budget. So basically, instead of speaking about change requests, we are speaking about exchange requests. Basically, you have a backlog. To give you an example, you have a user story which is estimated in 10 story points. You and you can tell to the client that don't just don't do it, and let's do another uh, user story with the same story point, same same amount of story points. This is important, and it really, it really helps you when you when you deliver this kind of project. Um, it will require some organization on your side, of course. Uh, it will require uh, having documents everywhere, Excel spreadsheets. Um, you know, people hate that, but this is how this is how it works. When you deliver this kind of project, you must be able to respond to that. If you are not able to change uh, anything in your project, that's that will be very complicated for you. Um, again. When you deliver uh, agile sprints, you and you know that you are fixed. You have five sprints, okay? Probably six or four or three. I don't know. You have to test each sprint. You cannot leave it to the end. So, uh, and this is probably obvious for you if you are doing agile projects that you okay. You say, yeah, I have to test anyway. Uh, but you have to do it, and you have to do it with your client. Your client must understand what you are doing each sprint, so you, you cannot really skip it. Because if you skip it, and you will deliver in agile, you deliver sprint by sprint. You inform the client. Client do not test. 
it means that you will lose money. That's for sure. Because in the end of the project, you don't have any more money. And then client arrives and says, actually, in my scope, I had all, this, all these devices. And now you have to test them. Then you, you're, you're, it's another two or three months of work. So very important, not only for uh, Agile, but always test what you, thought, what you deliver and test it with the client at the same time. And yeah, the finish job done. I know most if you if you already worked on the uh, agile project, you know what's what's that. Um, every user story, and it's even more important in the fixed budget, must be clear about what's actually delivered by this user story. You must have the definition of done or definition of ready, call it whatever you want. Each user story must be detailed, and it must say that I am accepted only when. You have done this and this and this, and it works in my browser, and it works in my mobile device. It must be very clear. If you are signing up for the project, which is uh, on the fixed on fixed price, and the, in the backlog, you only have user stories without definition of done, without definition of ready. You are signing for something that you don't know, and you know nobody no, nobody wants that. You you want to sign for something which is which can be delivered and your team are able to deliver it because if you don't if you don't do that it will be very very complicated for you uh, okay so that's it uh, that's it so if you have any question guys i'm able to i'm able to ask, answer um, this is me so if you have you have my contacts um, go for it I want to ask, uh, in that kind of projects, I think uh, the first stage should be value engineering. Do you use value engineering with the client to propose uh, the solution in the fixed budget? Uh, yeah, when, whenever um, we are mostly doing Drupal. So when we speak with the client in the beginning, we usually discuss the solution uh, and uh, we in smart processes, there is always a technical architect, tech, someone, someone, some, some guy who will arrive and who will understand, like a solution architect, who is participating in the pre-sales and uh, helping client define the the solution. So if you, if we always do that, if you don't do that, basically we are signing for again for something we don't understand. So there is always uh, the solution is always there. We sign the contract and the solution is in place. I mean, we don't say which kind of module we are going to use, but we define the solution in the contract already. So it will be a Drupal website. It, not, it will not be a headless Drupal website. It will be a normal website. You know, these uh, points are always listed in the contract. I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and understand what exactly they need, what exactly, because uh, um, sometimes they think that this feature is important, this is feature, this feature is important, everything important, yeah. but when we dip into mm -hmm. their business, we uh, get, we got uh, that uh, it's much they need only yeah. such, such, and the other features mm -hmm. is... Um, decrease the scope increase the scope of the project mm. but uh, don't uh, value in the business mm. don't have enough value in the business i mean okay yeah this is uh, yeah this is a problem usually but uh, when we sign this kind of project first of all we prefer not to sign this kind of project you know but when we sign it we it's based, based on experience it's most of the time uh, we we can we can estimate the the amount of time needed. We just we already did this kind of projects before, and we signed for it. And uh, when it always arrives when we start to dig inside the client business, and then we actually we have to redo everything. It arrives, uh, but when it arrives, um, uh, this has to be discussed. It's all the time. So this is a change request, uh, and this this kind of change request, you start to play with the contract. 
because the problem is that when uh, you're signing this kind of project, um, you have to, the contract must be very precise. And uh, if, if at some point you will get that, uh, one of the examples of my recent project, we delivered the project, uh, and on one of the uh, last, like, uh, go, no go meeting, uh, the guy say, oh, uh, actually in our policies, uh, you have to integrate with our uh, SSO and uh, you have to rebuild, almost rebuild Drupal uh, sign-on system with them because in their compliance, it's like that. But it wasn't in the contract and it was never, ne never mentioned. So this kind, this kind of stuff we sell. We try to sell again. Uh, and all these conversations are, are complicated most of the time because when, you, when, they, when the client has some budget, it means that they cannot get more most of the time. So it's, a, it's always a discussion in the end. Yeah. Uh, we just did. We just didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. In the end, uh, we say that we will never, we will not be able to do it in the current scope, and uh, it was complicated. But in fact, but in the end, they agree. And but it takes time, and this is the time we, we, where you lose, you where you lose your money basically, because you have to repeat your, you repeat yourself all the time. Your project manager, instead of delivering value, he's just going to, into the contract and you know reading, reading, reading. So we just didn't do it. Uh, and some projects we do it for free. It depends on on the client. So this is this is this is why it's important. You have to um, understand your company strategy when you deliver this kind of project. You have to say that uh, probably you want to lose money, but your company wants to get into this client. So it, so the the answer is it depends, <laughs> as usual. Some project management. I have yeah. another question. Okay, I'm with microphone, so <laughs> sorry. Sure. Okay, so uh, let's imagine that you have a request from the client. Mm. This is good client, and for sure uh, this contract will be fixed. Mm. Uh, but you can see, as project manager and as a team, that uh, the requirements are not full, mm -hmm. and uh, you have no time to clarify it. Uh, so what what would you choose? And may maybe from your experience, uh, you will uh, maybe ask for a. Uh, sprint to clarify the requirements, or maybe yeah, other option. In, in our experience, because yeah, we, we basically start the project. That's mm -hmm. kind of we take the risk. Um, why? Because um, we are speaking about Drupal. We are not speaking about like very very complex system with many components. So it's just Drupal. So uh, you your sales it. guy. He, he already estimated something, so you have to just accept that. So we basically go to go for risks. Um, it, it's not goes well all the time, but we try to. We prefer to take risks and start early and finish early. Okay, know? I've got it. And maybe you had experience to um, to ask client to have fixed uh, part and then agile part. So did you? And then which part? Sorry. Like a fixed part of the project and then agile part. So did did you use this approach? Fixed and then agile. Um, like what you sure no. first to do what you sure and then <laughs> no no some agile part. no no it's when it's uh, when it's fixed it's fixed and uh, you can your delivery model can be anything uh, but when it's fixed it's it's up to you normally to decide how to do um, and the challenge is when you when the client asks you about agile you have to deliver in an agile way. Uh, hello, Alexei. Thank you for the presentation. And first, I would like to ask um, what you said that it was around 90% of uh, projects with fixed bu yeah. budget. And what was, like it, at least in average, the amount of succeeds, uh, succeeded projects? And uh, the second part of this question would be um, nowadays are more um, clients with uh, non-fixed budgets comparing with previous yeah. years? Um, this, uh, I mean, you know, you're from Adi uh, originally from Ajax, so you know that we, we always deliver the projects, right? So uh, in terms of the failure, uh, when, what, what, we, what we say a failed project, we always deliver, but the failure, it can be in terms of the budget, for example. So if you say that, uh, uh, out of 90% uh, of fixed budgets, fixed projects, fixed budget projects we did, I will say around uh, 15 to 
was not good in terms of the financial results uh, for different reasons. There is always a reason. It can be uh, you wanted to deliver the project because you, there, you know that there are other projects will be coming. And why it's important uh, to sell sometimes this kind of projects on fixed price because you will be able to show the client that you can deliver in Agile. And after this project, you have to, I mean, during the project, you're educating clients about like what is the, the, the actual Agile, because why the budget are fixed? Most of the time, because they don't know what to do. They just like have this amount of money and they are scared to, to you know, be flexible. And during this kind of projects, it ends usually by the actual Agile contract. And then when they pay on time and material, so you have to take the risk but then you can you're, you will be able to prove to your client that you can deliver in agile and uh, then the client will actually start to become more relaxed more flexible because they know that you can deliver so that's kind of uh, that, that's the way we do it and we, do, we did it in a smile and uh, it works it's yeah it's still still it's still a lot of fixed budget yes uh, uh, Smile, Smile is a French company, uh, and France, it's the it's old Europe, so that's not US. They are most of the time very, very fixed on everything. You're working with big accounts, and big accounts are always have like a budget forecasting, so they know that this year I will spend this. So they so there is always a question of fixed price. It's very, very hard contractually uh, to sign the contract of for agile delivery. It's a in, I don't even know that if it exists in French, but French guys will probably help me, but I don't know that if it really exists, this kind of stuff, because with the big clients, it's always forecasting of budget. They don't, they just cannot, even if they want to, they just cannot really do it. Anything else, guys? Yeah. Mm. out of the curiosity. Do you have some range of hours or the line when you don't take uh, fixed budget uh, projects? I mean, are we talking about uh, hundreds of hours or thousands of hours? Like, do you have some line when you say, like, uh, the fixed uh, project is not possible because it's like months or years of development and like, sorry yeah. guys. Uh, yes, uh, this is a part of assessment usually in Smile. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when the project is arriving, the people are starting to ask the same question, like, are we able to deliver it? Uh, and usually it's, if the project takes more than one year to develop, mm -hmm. you don't, you don't do fix. So even it's, if it, it takes... It's too wide because you cannot really provide the proper budget for that. Okay. So even if it takes like few months, you take... Few uh, months, yes. Basically it right? works perfectly for the projects about six months. Ah, okay. Thank you. So this is this is kind. Of, this is a by experience. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, three questions. Um, first of all, about the uh, definition of done. Where do you keep it? In stories or in, in stories? The, in the contract. In, in stories. In stories. Okay. Yeah, not in contract. No. Um, okay. Uh, the second question about the flexibility matrix. Uh, mm -hmm. How this affects the the risks level? Uh, do you Put it into the contract as well. No, this is this is impossible to put into contract, unfortunately. Uh, this is something that you discuss with the client uh, when you when they ask you about agile. So when they ask, they say we want to do agile, but we have fixed budget. And this is where you start. You say, okay, in this case, we see that the planning is fixed, the budget is fixed, but there must be. If you say that you you want agile, there must be some flexibility. And, and, and client, then you stay to say, okay, let's discuss what's the flexibility for you. If it is, probably I just can cannot deliver last 10 user stories, or I will just not test uh, on the iPad, you know? Okay, and, and if cl uh, client says that um, everything is fixed for me, this is very strict. If you sign the contract, you're in, you're in a very, very bad place then. <laughs> Basically, that's, what, that's why I say in the beginning of my presentation, if you can, not sign that, don't do it. It's, it's a very risky, usually, this kind of project. And uh, one of my, my last, latest, latest project is exactly what you say. It's just when you write to the client and you say, let's remove something from the scope, say no. 
everything is important. And I will test in all the devices by myself. And they spent two months testing on all the devices after we delivered the project. And uh, yeah, and we are losing money. So that's why it will you will fail nine out of ten times. <laughs> it's complicated. Okay, and the uh, last question: uh, How much time uh, the estimation usually takes in your company? The estimation of the project? It's about a week. About a week. That's, that's depends on the project, but most of the time it's about a week. If you want to just estimate uh, the backlog, uh, why a week? Because you have to consult with different people. That's it. If you the in hours, uh, if you take the, the, yeah, it's like around a day. If you just take, you know, eight hours. But the, these eight hours are split on the whole week because people are here and there. And, you know, you have to speak with all, with all, the, all the guys all the time. It's mostly a communication problem. It's, uh, it takes, it, it should not take you more than eight hours. Because if it takes you more than that, then it's probably not worth it. It's, it's it will be very risky, too risky for uh, forget this. Ah, okay. Any other question, guys? Thanks. Ah.